Good morning, Salon Republic. Thank you for joining me. My name is Stephanie Kashmir. I'm the regional educator in Los Angeles, California for L'Oreal Professional. And today I'm gonna to take you through an express French balayage technique um, utilizing a new lightener called Clay 7, which gives seven levels of lift. And it has about 19% clay. Prior to actually doing the balayage, we are going to do a pre-colored treatment, brand new by L'Oreal Professional as well, called Metal Detox. And what's awesome about Metal Detox is it's a pre-colored treatment that's completely compatible with all color brands. It's a great way to make more money behind the chair because again, it's gonna basically become your insurance for your hair color. So what Metal Detox does is it removes the metals from the actual fiber of the hair. So never in the history of hair have we had a product that can actually enter the hair fiber and remove anything um, that's been deposited. And in this case, we found after seven years of testing and nine patents that it actually is metal from the copper erosion from the water pipes. And that's why we get undesired color results as well as see a lot of breakage when we're working with lighteners. So when we use Metal Detox, um, again, it's compatible with any color brand and it's really, really quick. It's gonna be an add-on service that we spray through the hair. So eight to 10 um, pumps or sprays is good for medium length hair, up to 20 for somebody who has longer length. So here we're gonna go ahead and just apply it right now. Um, and this would be done during consultation. All you're gonna do again is just loosely spray it through the hair, make sure you have it open. And it's got a really wide sprayer. So you can see the one spray I do pretty much covers the whole surface of that section. So I'm gonna spray it just kind of loosely taking sections. And you don't want the hair to feel too saturated. It's gonna feel a little bit more like a texture spray. It'll have a little bit of grip to it. Um, but by the time you've applied it throughout the whole head and sectioned out your hair, the hair should feel pretty dry. So super, super simple. I think I've done about seven sprays right now on her head. And the reason I'm not being too precise with the actual sprays themselves is because of the technology within the product. So there's an ingredient called glycamine, which you'll see um, on the bottle, but that's really what the game changer is. So glycamine is a super, super small molecule, and it actually has the ability to enter the hair fiber and attach itself to those metals. So you can see I've kind of sprayed it. It looks like it's slightly damp. So now I'm going to go ahead and just comb it through the hair. And because glycamine has the ability to just attach itself, that's the reason why we're not worried about completely saturating the hair. So if you've got any questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat box. But we're going to go ahead and start the express balayage service. So that's it. That's it for the treatment. So, so simple. We're gonna follow up with the shampoo and mask afterwards, but when it comes to the pre-color treatment, all you're doing is misting it through the hair. So today I am going to actually part this mannequin. Um, we're gonna say that she has a side part. So again, this whole express balayage should be done in about 15 sections. It's gonna be pretty quick. Um, depending on what you're looking to get out of it, it's gonna be extremely impactful. So this can be done down the middle or off to the side. But again, anytime we're doing a French balayage, since it is surface painting, we wanna make sure that we've established where the client puts their hair. So we're gonna go ahead and start in the front as well. Um, and again, that's a personal choice, but a lot of times when we're looking for more brightness around the hairline, um, it's better to start in the front of the hair or to change your developer if you're starting in the back mix a little bit different for the front, that way you can get a little bit more lift. All right, so I'm gonna just section her obviously from ear to ear, and then I'm gonna just clip the hair away in the back because we're gonna start with the front like I mentioned. So that way it's out of the way and we can work a lot cleaner. I think um, that's one of the biggest things with balayage is because again, we have so many different tools we're working with, the smarter and the cleaner we can work, the better it is. So set yourself up for success for sure. I've pre-measured um, one scoop of my Blonde Studio Clay 7. So with that, you have the option of mixing it according to how you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a 30 volume and I'm gonna mix a one to two part ratio. So I've got one part lightener and I'm gonna do two parts of 30 volume. I think that's a beautiful consistency to work with, especially when you're painting hair. Um, and again, because this is a clay lightener, 
it has the ability to adhere to the hair and actually just stick exactly where I've applied it. So there's no need for me to use cotton or perforated wrap. You can if that's what you prefer. But again, the product's going to kind of just stay exactly where we put it. It doesn't swell. It's a beautiful textured, wonderful consistency to work with. And it's super, super easy to mix up. So you can see um, I don't have any like dust clouds in my face. It's a really, really nice product consistency. So here we go. It mixes really nice. And that's one of the best parts when we're painting on a planchette is having a really nice lightener that you're able to pick up without having balls of clay or just thicker lightener. It makes it a lot easier when the consistency is right. So you can see here, this is one to two, like I mentioned. And this is probably more product than I need, but again, I'd rather mix more now since we're doing a class. So here we go. You can see the final consistency is a little bit more like, um, it's not quite a paste because it is a clay. It's a little bit looser, but it's super, super easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my planchette on one side. And you'll notice I'm using this brush specifically for the product. So I'm going to use it just to apply the lightener onto my planchette. And then I have a variety of other brushes that I'm actually going to be picking up my product with. So I personally like to have two regular size balayage brushes. And then I like to have one that's a little bit smaller to work with around the hairline. It makes it a little bit easier to get those smaller sections. Um, and again, like I mentioned, we don't have to use any cotton. So we're going to go ahead and just get into painting the hair. So the first section um, we'll do will be, we'll start in the front. So we'll start here off to the side of the part. So here, this will end up being, um, I would say probably four sections if we have a off center part. If it's down the center, it'll probably be five sections off to each side. So here again, like I mentioned, it's a super express quick technique. Um, and this would be prime for anybody coming into the salon for their first time balayage. So if they've never had balayage before, a lot of times I think we get lost as to where to start it or we end up painting way too many pieces and spend way too much time doing it. So here, um, this is just a really easy technique to do the first time, but then you can stay consistent with it because you'll remember exactly what you did with the previous appointment. So it makes it really easy if the client loves their hair for you to provide the same results. So the first section I'm going to take is actually going to be a diagonal forward. So again, depending on the client's hairline, you can either go diagonal forward or diagonal back. And I'm always looking at what makes the most sense for the hair, the head space and just the hair, the way it's growing. So here we'll start with a diagonal forward and that'll be our very first section. And I'm just going to clip that hair out of the way. Um, now here you could either check into the hair or you can take the full section. Since this is real close to the hairline and she may want some brightness there, I'm going to go ahead and just take the whole section. So I'm not worried about any negative space here or dropping any hair out because I'm only going to be painting the surface. And the other thing too is I'm always mindful of the amount of product I pick up. So if you notice, if I'm going to lay down a balayage line about the size of this here on my brush, I'm going to pick up that amount of product. If I'm going to go in really heavy, let's say, and do a bright money piece or something like that, I'm going to pick up a little bit more. So again, kind of pre-thinking about what you're laying down definitely sets you up for success. Clean that back up. Okay, and so I'm going to pick back up what I want, clean my section. So again, I always mention thumb tension pull and kind of just thumbing the hair, pulling a little bit of tension and just creating that really smooth surface for me to go in and paint. So here I'm going to start in zone two, and that is how we like to reference the zones. So zone two would be here, zone one would be at the regrowth area, and then sliding down into mid lengths and ends is where we would find zone three. Um, so I always want to start in zone two and then slightly feather it back up into zone one. And the reason for that is I don't want to apply too much lightener right there where the regrowth area is. For one, it's going to probably be natural and lift up a lot brighter. And for two, it ends up giving you an inconsistent result at the end. So we want to make sure um, that you start in zone two and then work it back up to zone one. And once you're there, then you can slide down into zone three and continue painting that surface. So here, this would be considered a double point, And you can see it's because it's in more of a V-shaped pattern. 
Um, you can completely play with your application. So again, with balayage, it's totally customized. So a consultation is key. But here we have this negative space. We can leave that if that's what we're looking for. Or if we were looking to brighten this up a little bit more, I can go in and kind of just feather in this lightener here. That way, this whole surface ends up being painted and we'll get a little bit more brightness. So again, that's something you can choose depending on what you're looking for, what your end goal is. Um, so then I'll come back here and load up my planchette and get into our second section. So since the first section was a diagonal forward, from that diagonal forward at the highest point, we're gonna go horizontal. So it makes it really, really easy to follow. And at the thickest um, section, you end up having about an inch space, a little less than an inch probably. So as we work our way up, it'll end up being four sections completely. So we'll go ahead and just follow that at the highest point, take it horizontally, and then that will be my next surface to paint. Um, the other thing I'm also thinking about as I'm working my way up the head is more brightness. So if they're looking for more brightness, I'll probably start to apply a little bit different as we work our way up. So again, here I'm going to take this section at its horizontal and starting in zone two, feathering it back up into zone one. And you can see how beautifully this product just really lays down on the hair. It actually adheres to the hair, which makes it really easy for me to kind of just glide it down nicely without having to go over my sections too many times. So here, this would be a double point. Again, we can go ahead if we wanted it to be a little bit brighter and sneak a little triple point in there, whereas the other one was a little bit more feathered. So you can see that had a little bit more surface painting. Here, I'm leaving a little bit of that negative space in there just to make those balayage highlights pop. So we'll go ahead and drop that section down too. And again, you can see um, the underside is completely clean aside from what you can see through because the hair is a little thin and I'm dropping it right on this section here. So I'm not worried about it picking up any product. Um, it actually stays where I've applied it. And that's one of the reasons I really, really love painting with the clay set in. All right, so now we'll go into our next section. So from that horizontal, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do another diagonal forward. And I'm thinking about the same um, inch sectioning, like I mentioned. So this will be my diagonal forward. And it's gonna leave me with one section at the part to complete this. So this is diagonal forward. So we went diagonal forward, horizontal, diagonal forward one more time. And again, here's where we're working a little bit more um, closer to the hairline, if you see from the front. So sometimes I like to do what I would call a 3D balayage. So at this point, knowing she wants some brightness around her face if she's pulling her hair back, I'm not only going to paint the surface, but I'm going to switch my body positioning and I'm going to paint this here. Because standing this way, there's no way for me to paint that underside. But when you move your body, you're able to actually paint it. So I'm going to cover this as well as the front, which is going to be more of like a 3D balayage. So here again, we'll start with the surface paint. So I'm going to start with my first points here and then I'll switch my positioning over. So here you can see. And again, I know a lot of times people feel like um, it looks so stripey, like when they're looking at the lightener on the hair or they can't really envision how it's going to turn out. And the one thing with surface painting is, again, because it's only the surface, you're really getting that sun-kissed balayage look. So um, it's possible to completely saturate the hair, but this is more for just a sun-kissed look. So here I have my double points. Now I'm going to actually slide my positioning over and I'll move the doll so we have a better idea. So now you can see by me changing my body position, I now have that hair I'm going to be able to paint here on the side. So I'm going to get a little bit more coverage. And again, that's what makes an express service so much um, better to have, like to pull out of your pocket when you need it, because you're able to get a lot done in a little bit of time and get a large impactful uh, finish. So here again, I'm just kind of painting that surface and then I'll switch back over to where I was and pull it through into zone three. So 
switch my angle for you. So again, now I've covered that closer to the hairline and I'm just pulling it through. And then dropping it down. And here I'll leave that negative space because I'm gonna go um, a little bit heavier with my placement here off the part. That way I have a little bit of depth there for this brightness to shine through. So again, this brings us to the final section off to the side of the part, and this will be our fourth section. I'm loading up my planchette, and again, you can see my consistency is staying pretty even. It doesn't swell too much throughout, which makes it, again, so easy to keep working with. And one more thing I don't think I mentioned, but it's completely ammonia-free. So that's the other thing, is it's really nice to have an ammonia-free lightening option um, that gives you seven levels of lift in a clay form. Okay, so here, this is how she parts. So again, um, I'm gonna actually leave this section out because I want it to be a little bit more balanced. So we're gonna finish with this being a horizontal, but before we finish that, I'm gonna slide over onto the opposite side and kind of catch it up. That way it's not sitting too long right there at the top of her part. Okay, so now we'll go into here. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. So this will be our diagonal forward section. Try to get you a better view, there we go. Um, okay, so we'll start with the diagonal forward once again. Super, super easy to follow. So again, I think you'll see where we're going with it. Diagonal forward, horizontal, but again, because we like working in triangular sections to get that flat surface, um, by doing it like this, you're able to get it every time. So it just kind of just lays out that perfect balayage placement for you. So again, this will be my first section, a diagonal forward off to the other side. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other side. So again, that's one thing um, that makes it easy for your consistency is remembering if you did that placement diagonal forward, horizontal and follow it, then you just remember whether you're working with your single or triple points. And it makes it really, really simple to stay consistent. So I know on the last one, um, I kind of feathered it up into that negative space. So we'll do the same thing here. And I'm just slightly with a little flick of my wrist, kind of just working it up into that area. And then we'll drop it down. my angle a little bit for you. Okay. So from that diagonal forward, once again, we will now go into a horizontal. So right there, straight across, dropping that section directly down. And again, I'm not concerned about it picking up that product. All right. And this is my awkward side, guys. So sorry, I'm not in the camera, but <laughs> it's a little more awkward on one side when we're doing hair, but I wanna make sure you guys have a clear view of the application. So again, this will be my horizontal section and I'm gonna go in with a double point. So here we go. And that's the one thing with balayage, it's completely customizable. So like sometimes if you're looking for brightness, you can do a really, really thick single point, which would cover this whole section. Um, and that'll give you a really impactful lightening. But I think the one thing that's really nice is just working smarter, not harder and stepping back at your work. Because again, when you step back and look at it, what you see is what you get. Um, and so it makes it a lot easier because sometimes when we're up in it and we continue to keep painting more pieces, we create a lot more work for ourselves than is necessary. So sometimes a more impactful finish comes from a little less work or placement. Um, and again, like I mentioned, this will be about 15 sections total. So it'll be about 10 around the hairline and we're actually on our sixth section right now. So we have four more around the hairline. So from that horizontal, um, here I'm just gonna double check because I believe on the second one there, yeah, we did a 
triple point. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop one more line in there. But again, that's completely up to you what you're looking for. So you can do your double or you can do a triple if you're looking for just a little bit more brightness. But just remember, by leaving that negative space is what really makes blondes look a lot brighter sometimes. Just so that there's some contrast to compare it to. All right, so from that horizontal, we'll go ahead and do another diagonal forward, which is working us up towards the top of the head now. And this is our third section. All right, and so again, we're going to go ahead starting in zone two and apply that lightener. And if you notice, I pick up a lot more in the beginning when I apply it and then I kind of spread it up. So I'm kind of working it up, but you wanna be careful not to go over the hair too many times um, because at that point you start to move the product. So we wanna make sure that we're applying it where we need it, but then slightly feathering it where we're looking for a softer finish. All right. And I believe the third one off to the other side is where we kind of covered the surface a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and just feather over that surface in the negative space here. That way we can get a little bit more brightness working up into her crown area. Okay, and then that leaves it looking like that. So you can already tell that we're gonna have some negative space, but we're gonna get a really bright and impactful um, placement with that lightener right there. Okay. So now here is where we'll take our next section. And at this point, uh, let me straighten our head out because this is where we would probably do, actually, this would be our 3D balayage because it's right here at her eyebrow. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this section and switch my body position just so that I can get it a little bit brighter right here since it is, that's where we did it on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of paint that right there. So again, depending on what you're comfortable with, you can start with applying that standing behind it, or you can apply the front this way and then slide over. I think it's a little bit easier to do it um, the way I did it the first time. So by actually applying the top section, so flat, and then sliding back over. And again, I'm just gonna straighten this hair out since I moved it and just make sure that that's all still coated nicely. Okay, perfect. So then our next section again, now that was our diagonal forward. Oops, I'm sorry, that was our horizontal. So now we'll go diagonal forward. And this is our fourth section. So we should have about two more at the top once this is completed. And again, depending on um, the density of the hair and the amount of hair that the client actually has, this is kind of just standard 15 sections. You may have more, you may have less, but I feel like um, even with somebody who has a ton of hair, maybe you don't go as deep in the back, but you can really get an impactful look with your lightning service by just applying these few sections. So again, here you see, now that we're working our way back towards the actual top of the head, um, I can definitely slide in a 3D balayage here as well because I have this whole surface around her hairline. So in order to make the most of this uh, section and to get the biggest impact, and again, not to take too many sections, but to get a quick and express service, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. So I'm always letting the hair kind of talk to me. So what I saw when I dropped this section down was, yeah, I could paint the surface, but at the same time, there's a ton of hair here when I stand behind it that I can actually apply to. So we'll go ahead and apply that first because this is a bigger section and then I'll change my body position again. So here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go right in the center of that piece, I think, because I want it to be a little bit brighter there. Okay, so now that I've applied this, and this is what would also be known as the money piece in a lot of um, situations. Everybody wants that really bright front. So this is where you can actually saturate the hair if that's what you're looking for. But again, I'm going to just paint both sides, um, knowing that because of what we've created below, it's going to kind of just cascade into it beautifully. So I've applied that here. Now I'm going to slide my body positioning over, look for that really clean flat surface again. And now I'm going to paint the surface here. So 
We've got it on that side. And now we'll go right back in and I'm going actually right on the surface, the top surface of where that was painted here. So the inside will still have that depth, but I'm able to give her that brightness for when she pulls her hair back as well as um, just a more impactful front area. Oops. All right, so here we are going to make this a triple point. So I've got my two in. And I'll go in and create that third point. All right. Working it all the way down and then dropping it down. And I think the one thing too, when you're balayaging is really working with natural fall. So a lot of times I'm paying attention to the growth pattern and how the hair is falling. And that's kind of what is determining where I'm gonna apply that lightener. So here we have, um, that's our fourth section, I believe. Yep. So we've got two more on the top and then we'll finish the one on the side here. So again, since that was our uh, diagonal forward, we're gonna finish with horizontal just due to the fact that the way the hair is falling. So here, she's got about this much more space off to the part. We need to get two more sections out of this. Normally the top two end up being kind of horizontal just so that you can offset them. So um, if you have enough head space, it could be a diagonal forward or you can just continue the horizontals. Really just depends on what you're looking to see and how their hair is falling. So actually with her, the way she falls so heavy, you can see kind of, and again, she's a mannequin, but just off to the side. Um, I think I will actually, rather than do the horizontal, a diagonal forward, because that's how her hair wants to fall. Yeah, so that ends up being actually a diagonal back from the top of her head. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So again, because I can see this here, I'm gonna go ahead and paint that brightness. But because I've been doing that now, working up the crown, I need to be mindful of that off to the other side. So to make sure that we have balance, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other section. Um, so we'll go ahead and start again. And here I'm gonna switch my brush since I am working um, closer to the top of the head and I'm gonna be applying smaller points with my application. So here I'm going to go ahead and just, again, apply it into zone one, working it into zone two. And then I'm going to change my body position and paint this surface of the hair. And again, this is going to be a little bit more impactful now. You can see I'm going a little bit wider with the actual point I'm laying down. But again, knowing she parts off to this side, I want to make sure that she has that really beautiful brightness that kind of cascades into a darker back for a little bit more dimension. So always starting in zone two, working on my way back up into zone one. And then here, since we have that 3D balayage as well as the front, I'm going to go ahead and pop in my third point. And let me change the angle because I realize you can't really see with the way I'm turning. Okay. And so here's my third point. We'll go ahead and just pop that in and just soften that edge. Okay, right, beautiful. And if we have any questions, feel free um, again to type them in the chat box because I would love to answer any questions if there's anything that I can help you with or if you need a better angle. Um, okay, so that leaves us with our last two sections now on top. So you can see, super, super simple. We're just going to do our last two, and we need to be really cautious of the way we lay those points down. Because again, a balayage, we don't want to look like a highlight. So um, we don't want them to be off the part, completely across from each other, like you would have with a foil. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to lay down off to the part here. Um, and this will probably end up being a heavy triple again. But again, you can play with your triple, double, and single point depending on the impact you're looking for. Bring her down some. All right. 
And I think the key really is smoothing out those little hairs. So um, instead of rushing through it, take the time to really feel one with the hair and make sure that you have a nice section because the cleaner you can work, the better your results are going to be. So again, um, here we're up at the part. So I'm gonna go a little bit heavier with my first point, knowing that she's looking for that brightness. And then I'll go ahead and do my third point. And sometimes depending on the headspace, you might have more than three points. It could be maybe four, whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you're looking to see out of that hair. Um, so here I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I might do four points in this if I can fit it. So let's see. Um, so we'll do four little soft ones. And again, there I applied a little bit more at the root because I'm working it down and I wanted to make sure I can stay small with that application. And we'll go in for the last one. And depending on how you're comfortable, you could always do like one, two, three, and four, or I like to just balance it out. So I'll always create a double point and then I'll add my triple or anything furthermore. I think it just makes it a little bit easier to lay it out in the actual hair. So I like using the small brush, obviously to lay it down when I'm looking to create more but I will switch back over to my bigger brush if I'm looking to paint the bigger surface sometimes just so that it is a little bit quicker. All right. And again, what you see is what you get. I know I've said it before, but if you don't like what you're seeing, you want to fix it in that time. So um, that looks like a beautiful blend right there. That's our final section off to the side. So now I'm going to slide back over onto the left side and we'll complete that part and make sure that we're offsetting it. So super, super simple. This is only 10 sections once we get it uh, applied right here. So loading up again. And the reason I keep the one side clean is because if I was gonna pull through the hair, I would pop it on to the planchette and I would actually saturate it there. So it gives you that ability so that you can work a little bit cleaner. Um, okay, so here is our final section. Oops, and our hair is actually in the mannequin stand. Hold on a second. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, and I am going to, again, looking at this and remembering that we did paint off to the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So again, I'm taking this in one section but I'm gonna do that 3D balayage just by changing my body position to make sure that I can cover that area in case she pulls her hair back. But then you'll see me slide back over so that we can paint the surface. So we'll start with that. And again, I'm just going right in the center of it um, just to kind of create some balance here. Because again, during consultation, we already know that she parts off to the side all of the time. Um, so that's why I'm making sure that we're doing the surface painting exactly where her hair is at natural fall. Okay, so now I've got that done already and I've slid back over to have this smooth area to paint. So now with my application, what I'm gonna pay attention to is actually where I laid down those previous pieces. So again, the front one will always end up being closer to the hairline, obviously, because we want more brightness there. But then I'm going to stagger them. That way they're not directly across from each other and it doesn't end up looking like a highlight and it grows out seamlessly. So knowing that I have a point here, my goal is going to be to go in between them off to the side so that when that grows out, it ends up looking, again, a little bit more natural, a little bit more sun-kissed. Um, and they don't have a hard line of demarcation. So if they were directly across from each other, it would end up growing out with a really hard line. Um, and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of balayage because again, balayage is a lot softer, a lot more customized and it's more natural looking. It's not as like pinpointable with each highlight. So again, just completing this section and working it down into the ends. And I just really, really love working with this product. I think um, product is definitely key. I know a lot of lighteners swell a ton and they make it a little bit difficult to work with. If you've noticed, I haven't remixed or done anything and my consistency is still really nice with this product. 
So again, that would be our front section completed and that's only 10 sections. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into the back, but you can see how impactful and bold this looks. And what you're seeing right now is pretty much what you're gonna get afterwards. So for her being all over one color, um, you're gonna get a ton of dimension in a little bit of time. So our final um, sectioning is gonna be done in the back. And again, super, super easy. We're gonna stick with working with the diagonal forwards and the horizontal. But here, the way we're gonna start this, we can do it one of two ways. And again, it depends on the head space. So you can do a straight horizontal across the back and work off of that. But if the client has a lot of layering through their hair, or if they have any layering at all, again, that's something I'm looking at when it comes to painting the hair, um, then I'm probably going to do a V section. And the reason for that is so that I can go a little bit deeper and get that hair on the bottom side to make sure that everything beautifully blends. So again, um, you can go as deep as you want, but you're really just looking at where does that final layer fall? And if we're going to be painting that, we want to make sure if it's shorter here, it's not cutting off. So with her, we'll go ahead and do a V section just so I can show you how simple that placement can be. And again, if you go pretty deep with it, um, we're still going for about five sections in the back. So regardless of the size of the V section you create, we're still kind of just going for that five section total. So what we'll do with the V section is we're gonna do two off to the side. And let me just turn her a little bit more in front of me to get this a little cleaner. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clip the hair up. And another thing is I'm gonna be uh, mindful of the growth pattern on top because a lot of women or anybody who's coming in for a balayage at that, for that matter, um, everybody's hair starts to swirl with their natural growth pattern here. So a lot of times if somebody is not a daily shampooer, they end up with like that big dark hole in the back and it looks like they need their hair done. So we wanna make sure that due to their growth pattern or applying the um, product where we'll get the most benefit out of it and it doesn't end up making it look like they've got a dark hole. So again, here we've got our V-sectioning and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just take my first two um, sections directly off of that V. So again, you check into the hair just so that you have some padding. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, without overthinking it, create a check mark, which in turn creates another V and that gives me some padding so that I'm able to paint the surface without it actually seeping through the hair. All right, so here we will go ahead again, check into it, and then I'm gonna paint this surface. So we'll go ahead and think of this as being a triple point or you can do a heavy double. So for time purposes, since we are doing an express service, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a thicker double point. That way I'm covering a little bit more and I'm getting more impact. And again, because this is the bottom, um, I'll probably feather that into that negative space here just so that we have a little bit more dimension knowing I'm not doing anything else underneath this hair. So that way it all blends beautifully. All right, so you do the first one off of that side. And then again, the next section will be exactly the same way. Checking into the opposite side, creating that really smooth surface and applying the product. And anytime you have loose hairs like this, of course, this is a mannequin, but it happens with real people. Um, it's the best to just kind of pull them out because again, they'll hold lightener and the same with your brush. So the cleaner you can work, the easier it is because the last thing you want is a piece of loose hair kind of just spreading the lightener um, in the hair where you don't want it. So again, just kind of get those pieces of hair off the brush. That way you have a cleaner application. Okay, and then we've got my double point there. So from that, you can see that we've got our two double points. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a horizontal section. So again, we're following that same diagonal forward, diagonal back, and then horizontal. So with the horizontal, again, it's gonna be just like the front. We're gonna go from the highest point of our application directly across. So that was our first section. This will be our second section. And again, I'm just going straight across. And what that's doing is creating a perfect section for me to just go ahead and apply in. 
So we'll go ahead and take that section. And again, I'm kind of just clipping on the top of her head. Um, that's how you can avoid clipping into the growth pattern. So I'm just loosely putting the clip on top of her head just to hold her hair there. So again, this would be my next section. Um, you can see because of the way we've taken it, since we started with a V, the padding is already created for you. So you don't need to worry about the hair seeping through. If you wanted to, you can take this whole section or you could break it into two. But for time purposes, again, I think um, taking the whole section is nice or just checking into it if you're looking for a little bit of negative space. And again, because we've moved from the front to the back, I want a little bit more depth back here. So I am going to check into it. I'm going to make that section a little bit smaller and I'm going to just paint what I've taken here. Oops, which will be a horizontal. So again, thinking about the most impactful in the shortest amount of time. And I'm gonna actually slide around again. Body positioning is everything. So if you're not comfortable, move or have your client move because again, that changes everything. So I work a little bit better off to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and go here again. And one other thing I will say too, a lot of times, especially if you're trying not to clip into the growth pattern, um, it's nice to have an extra clip just so that you can lift that hair and just get it out of the way if you're looking to get really clean parting. So I'll always make sure that I have an extra clip just to do that with. Okay. So here we go again. So checking back into this. So I'm just leaving a little bit of that negative space and depth underneath it. And I'm going to go ahead and paint my triple point into this section here. And again, I'm doing a triple point just so that I can cover the most amount of headspace in the smallest amount of time. And this is what I mean with like the hair. So like that is what we don't want. And again, this mannequin shedding a bit, <laughs> as you can tell, um, but by removing that, it really makes a big difference because if I was to keep that on my brush right now and I applied this second point, it's gonna end up kind of just feathering that lightener. And if I didn't want it there, I have no control at that point. So just by working a little bit smarter, it makes everything so much easier. And apply my triple point. And this is more of a feathered triple point. You can tell that I've kind of blended the color together. Um, and again, because I'm looking for a softer blend towards the back. So it's a little bit more impactful in the front. In the back, I'm kind of just lightly feathering most of my points. So now that we have that section in, we'll go back. And the next one, again, is going to be a B section. So it makes it super, super easy because it's completely mapped out for us. So we have our horizontal. Now I'm going to go ahead and just create one more V section. just like we did in the beginning. So it makes it super, super easy to follow. V horizontal, V horizontal, when it comes to working with the back sectioning. And so then again, I have my section completely laid out for me here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this whole flat section and paint the surface of it again. Um, and you can check into it like I'm doing now if you're looking to leave a little bit more negative space. And in the back, I like to do that again, just so that it makes the front appear to be a little bit brighter since we have less hair covered in the back. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and apply my double point again, and I'll do the same thing off to the other side once this application is done. So this could be a double or a triple, really depending on what you're looking for. Um, since we're working up towards the top of the head, I'm gonna actually just keep this as a double on both sides. That way we've got a little bit more depth, and then I'll probably do some smaller single points um, at the top of her hair wing. Okay. And I'm just going to bring this in a little bit more. Okay, perfect, like that. So we'll do that double and we'll duplicate it off to the other side here. And if you notice too, um, I'm not working with gloves. And the reason I'm not working with gloves, honestly, is because I pop through them a lot. 
But the reason I'm bringing it up is because like I mentioned, this lightener is completely ammonia free. Um, and it's one of the beautiful points of painting with it because we end up really painting to that very, very tippy end. You end up sometimes with lightener on your hands or your gloves. And because L'Oreal Professional has ion G conditioning agents built into their lighteners, I never feel like the product is like eating through my hands or so it's really refreshing to know um, that it is so gentle and ammonia free because if my hands aren't affected by it, then the hair is definitely in much better condition once it's laid. So here we go again with our double point. All right, and then I'll drop that down. So here we've got both of those. And you can see too, by taking the sections like this, it's balancing out and covering all of the headspace beautifully, but super, super easy to do and how to remember it is super, super easy to follow because the technique is very predictable once you start doing it. Um, so now that we have that section done here, we're gonna do one more horizontal and then we'll probably finish with our crown. So again, we're gonna go right across and I'm always thinking about like an inch within um, my section. So just to make sure it's balanced out, I'm just gonna go across. And then that actually brings me into her growth pattern. And you can already see as I take that horizontal, even on a doll, you can see her hair is starting to separate there. So that's the section I'm gonna take, which is my perfect horizontal. But then here you can see that growth pattern is just swirling off to either side. So I'll show you how we approach that um, with our, our final section there. Okay, so here again, we have our section completely laid out for us again. Um, now we're at the top. So if you wanted to take the whole section again, you could, or you can check into it if you were looking to leave more space. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the whole thing. Um, and here I'm probably going to do, because again, it's right in the center. I wanna make sure it's balanced. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a triple point with this application. Oops. Man, she's really shining today. There we go. All right. <laughs> Um, so now again, just starting about an inch down from that hairline, feathering it back up. And then adding in my triple point. And the one really nice part about this too is um, this lightener contains 19% clay. So it is one of the highest amounts of clay um, available. And I think that that's what really plays into the beautiful consistency and the way it spreads on the hair. So like I mentioned, it pretty much adheres to the hair. That's why I'm able to paint it with a completely clean underside, but then I'm also able to just drop it right back down and I'm not worried about it picking up the lightener from the section below. Um, so for me, having that insurance and knowing that where I put it, it stays is really one of the added benefits as well. So now we are at our final section. And again, this is where the hair starts to swirl naturally. So you can see, even though she's a doll, um, most people will have like one or two growth patterns towards the back. So it's always nice to identify those because again, that's gonna determine my placement right now. So knowing that our hair is swirling like this, um, if I was to take this whole horizontal section and just paint it backwards and her hair split like that, it's basically going to just expose that dark area in here. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that when her hair falls into her natural fall here, she doesn't have that dark hole. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to take a section right from the center of it. So basically, if I was standing behind it, I would check into the center of the growth pattern. So I'm getting some of the hair that's going that way and some of the hair that's naturally going that way. And I'm going to paint the surface of that to create that very first point. The other thing is, too, you'll notice um, that the hair is splitting, but I've laid down my lines below 
that way when this does split it ends up being balanced as well so we want to make sure that we're just paying attention to the way the hair is actually falling because nine times out of ten if the client's not shampooing daily this will end up looking like a dark hole like i mentioned and the hair just goes right back into his natural fall and you can see that so here i'm going to go ahead reload my planchette And we're gonna do, this would be known as a single point. So since I'm only painting the one piece, um, this would be where you can use a smaller brush. I think it makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more controllable. But then we're gonna go ahead and just paint the surface of this one piece. Okay. And then from that one, I'm actually going to take one more off to the other side. So again, the hair is swirling there. I know that that's the way it's going to fall naturally. So I'm going to take the next piece off to that swirl and I'm going to paint this side of it. And anytime you're doing a single point, um, or a smaller piece, sometimes it's a little bit harder to control the actual product. So to make sure that it's only on the top side, a good way to think about that is to think about the back of your brush actually as like an eraser. So to make sure that I don't have any loose products, especially on those small sections I'm taking, I'm gonna just hold a little tension and run my brush directly underneath it just to make sure that if there was anything, I've kind of smoothed it out and blended it so that I don't end up with like a big spot of lightener later. So that's gonna make sure that everything just looks really seamless and sun-kissed. And again, that's the point of difference with um, a French balayage or just surface painting is to get more of a natural effect from it. So here, now that we did those two, um, I'll go right off to the other side where you see it swirling here. And this is where we're gonna take one more point. So to give you a closer view, cause I know it's a little bit harder. You can see I took the one off to the side this one straight down, and now you can see the hair is swirling here. So this would be my neck section right there off to the side. So we'll do one more single point. All right. All right, so that brings us to the very top of the head. And basically, um, because of her growth pattern, we took those single points, but it leaves me with a little bit more hair um, just because I was going off of how her hair grows. So again, I'm looking at what we have remaining, and it's really just a little bit off to either side. I think her hair kind of swirls that way. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop in two more points there. But most of the time you could finish with just that final section either being horizontal and then doing your pieces off to the swirl. So I think um, the way this hair is falling, I think it'll be best to actually, oops, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just I'll change this angle for you. We'll go ahead and just take this and I'm gonna just paint this section since it's the back of her head anyway, I'm gonna just do a double point off to both sides to balance that out. So technically, if her growth pattern didn't split like that, it could have been two horizontals finishing on the back. But because she's splitting, I'm going to actually just let it go with that natural fall, and I'm going to apply my points off of her part. So again, that's where balayage becomes a little bit more bespoke, because even with a mannequin, I'm paying attention to the growth pattern, and it's kind of speaking to me. So that's why it'll never be the same. You really want to pay attention to kind of what's happening with the hair and the growth pattern. So this will be the most of the headspace in the most impactful and shortest time. So we'll go ahead and just pop in a double point. And process time is up to 50 minutes. So after 50 minutes, we should have about seven levels of lift using the clay seven. So again, I think that's pretty um, remarkable with it being ammonia free and getting the seven levels of lift. It's definitely reassuring knowing that we're not going in with such a harsh product and we're able to get the lifting we want. So you can see that double. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing here. And then that's going to complete 
our application. And I want to say it's been 55 minutes, I believe, talking through this. So this service can easily be done in under an hour, I'd say probably an hour and a half uh, with a blow dry, depending on the amount of hair the client has. But again, time is money and the smarter we can work, the better. And if we can make more money in less time, that would be a really, really great thing to do for all of us. So again, in this short amount of time, I've done a pre-colored treatment called Metal Detox. Um, and basically what that is doing for me while I'm lightening right now is it is protecting the hair, removing the metals, but it's also keeping the hair a little bit more on tone and it's giving me up to 87% less breakage than what I would see if I wasn't using the product itself. So again, um, there's a lot of things that contain metal. Some hair color actually contains metal. Some hair products contain metal. But all in all, metal is coming from our water. And even if you have a water softener, it still changes our color results. So by utilizing Metal Detox, I know that I can deposit my tone perfectly once I'm done. And with this, any L'Oreal service, I'll finish with a Dialyte gloss. So again, that's ammonia-free. It's an ammonia-free gloss that's done in two to five minutes. Um, so the whole entire service itself is ammonia-free, which is really, really awesome. So that is 15 sections. Um, super, super fast. Does anybody have any questions on what I've done? If you do, feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, I'd love to answer any questions you have, but you can see, again, this is pretty, pretty impactful. You can see everything is pretty much covered, even around, and I'm going to flip it over right now, but even around her hairline, you can see that we have those bright pieces so that if she does pull her hair back, she's going to have that brightness. Um, and then again, because I followed this specific placement, it's going to be really, really easy to go back and to just retouch this actual balayage. So a lot of times people will get lost in the balayage and they'll just paint too many pieces. And before you know it, they're completely blended and it doesn't look very sun-kissed. So knowing that you have an application to follow from start to finish, it makes it really easy when you're trying to reconnect those points in future visits. So I hope that this was something that you can use, um, maybe put into practice this week behind the chair at some time. Um, I think that again, express services are really, really great to do and to have a go-to application that you can just pull out anytime from your client is a really great thing to keep in mind. So I hope that this 15 section express balayage is definitely something that you find impactful and are going to be using behind the chair. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. And again, my name is Stephanie Cashmere at Stephanie underscore Cashmere underscore pro. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. But again, thank you for spending your time with me in this express balayage. Have a wonderful week.